Okay, so uh, another article by uh, Point Magazine this time. And uh, so the title is, Am I on Time in My Training? And it begins something like this. So uh, I'm not going to use the, the, the student's name, just out of politeness. So deep down, so-and-so knew she wasn't ready. Despite 15 years of solid training, um, wait a minute, 15 years? You know, what occurs to me is that, so this article is about, uh, are you on time? In other words, at age 16, uh, can you do A, B, C, D? And what occurs to me is, you know, you, these teachers might, they're going to make damn sure you're on time with the payment, right? You're going to pay on time, especially 15. You're not going to be 15 years late, right? So it's saying 15 years. So, so this young lady, 15 years of training, and here's what happened. Solid training. No, no, it isn't. Um, by the end of high school, so when she's 17, 18, she realized she still didn't have the technique or maturity for a realistic shot in a company audition. Not, not the job, just to audition successfully. Um, it was terrifying, she recalls. I was unsure of where I stood in terms of my dancing abilities, but I didn't really know where or how to improve. Okay, so <clears throat> 15 years, and she didn't know where she stood at all, and she didn't know how or where to improve. These are quotes. This is a quote from this person. That is not solid training by any standard. Uh, <laughs> and yet, you know, these articles come out as if this is, oh, this is all very... So you do need eight years of training when you go to the bull, accept the bullshit and then you become a professional dancer? Or less than eight years. A sophomore Nureyev. sir had... Nureyev? Yeah, Nureyev, he was, I think, 17 or 18 when he showed up at Vaganova, had three years training. My sophomore sir was 16. Four, yeah, four years, four years training. training. Borishnikov, three years training at Vaganova. He had some in Latvia, but... So, yeah, no, you don't need... I mean, eight would be a, the only reason you need eight years is if you start at age 10 and your body just needs to grow. But you don't need anything like eight years to become professional. So let's say you start at 16. Yeah, by 19, you're good. 20, you know. So. Whoops, that's already. Right yeah, it's already three times as much, more than three times as much. And, well, look, judging by. So she probably started at three years old. You, 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 cannot, you cannot start ballet before age nine or ten, really. I mean, you just shouldn't. Now, you can go to something called a ballet class when you're four and run around with a costume. That's fine. That's great. You know, just music and fun, and that's fine. But you're, you shouldn't be doing anything like turnout. And turnout is the first thing we teach. By the way, turnout's not mentioned once in this article. This is, this is astonishing, right? <clears throat> so... <clears throat> She was unaware of where she stood in terms of her dancing abilities. I don't know what other abilities we're talking about here. This is dance. It's a ballet article. Uh, and so she goes, um, you know, she wishes she'd figured out that she was behind sooner. Okay, behind. I'd had good training. No, you didn't. But was obvious, but was oblivious to the fact that I needed to do so much more than I was. So after 15 years, she was oblivious. Her words, not mine. Oblivious is like uh, just completely unaware of your surroundings. <clears throat> just blind, essentially. So what have you been doing for 15 years? Intellectually blind. Uh, many students fear being in a situation like this, arriving at a company audition only to discover that they haven't progressed technically and artistically as far as their peers. And with an endless supply of ballet prodigies online, that's a lame word, and in competitions, it's hard not to worry that you're not advancing fast enough. So how can you make sure you're on track to meet your professional goals? Um, yeah, you, you can't do anything like art until your technique is there. So even in Bolshoi Vaganova, 
they graduate, they're not artists, not anything like it. You know, that begins in the theater. You know, it's interesting speaking on that. When they, <coughs> when they get to, when they choose them for the profession, when the, when the theater looks at them, right? Mm. When they come to them from the academy, mm. academies, because there's more than one, um, the first thing they look at their turnout. Well, of course, because that's the basis of everything. But now here's what this guy is saying who wrote this article. The training benchmarks. There are no firm rules, but most teachers agree that students need to meet certain technical and artistic benchmarks en route to a career. Now, there are firm rules, you just don't know them. Okay, fine, they're being honest. And getting a start started early is a definite advantage. True. Uh, another teacher, head of faculty at Manhattan Youth Ballet, whatever, says that uh, between I'm assuming ages 14 and 16, although they didn't write that. Ages 14 and 16, professionally aspiring dancers should have uh, base knowledge under their belts. For example, dancing on point, double pirouette on de don on de or, and an understanding of Batu and Petit Allegro, for example. Why? Well, okay, but what about turnout? What about turnout? Turnout is on your list of... Um, base knowledge, number one is turnout, number two is placement. Uh, not dancing on point, that's, or, you know, double pirouette, what? Um, understanding Batu and Pita, turnout, dear, turnout is number one on that list. I mean, if you're going to use it, obviously there's a lot of things, she's not saying only these things, but this is just, an, for example, these things, why not turnout and placement is the first thing. All right. Uh, another uh, teacher and director of uh, Maryland Youth Ballet agrees, but adds that students behind the curve can make up for a late start mm, or poor early training if they have enough natural coordination, physicality, determination, and focus. No. No, there is no... Uh, there's, no, no, no. Natural coordination... Turnout's not natural, neither is placement. You can vouch for that. So, yeah, you can, you can be intelligent in, and your body can be a little sort of simpler to teach, but there is no natural, really natural coordination. Uh, physicality, whatever that, that's a word that doesn't mean anything. Determination and focus, well, you need that no matter what. Um, the dancer's end goal influences the pace of their progress, too. No, it really shouldn't. Yeah, this is something I meant to talk about separately, but I'll just mention it here, that whatever the person decides to do with their training is their business, but the education should be the same for everyone no matter what. There is no amateur ballet teaching. I mean, there is, but there shouldn't be. So it doesn't matter what they want to do with it. You give them a professional education, what they do with it is up to them. And they're saying that, though, if you want to be, I mean, at some point, if you want to be a professional, you need to, like, get it done by, the, let's say, the time you're 18 or whatever, which also isn't <laughs> entirely true. Now, here's where the selling starts. Hmm? Which She just said the dancer's end goal influences the pace of their progress, too. So they're really talking about professional track. Next sentence. A college conservatory program gives an extra four years of intense study and performance experience. Wait a minute, so... You have 15 plus another four. Yes, yeah, so you need yeah, you need 19 years. But not even that, like, if you're going to be a professional ballet dancer, you, you want to begin at 18 or thereabouts in the theater. You want to get your education done, basic, and move on. Another four years in a college program, no, no, well, no. In the college, in how I'm looking for my upbringing, college means that you want to be a teacher of the... Yeah, well, <laughs> obviously we have those programs which are, yeah, not good. But no, they actually mean going to a college for as a performer. Oh. Well, well no. You do have that too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. you're going to wait from 18, you're going to start auditioning at 22? And then career, everybody else saying that by 35 you're done? Well, not, well the whole article is about not getting behind. Right. So... You're already behind 
and now you're going to spend four more years in college to get way behind. So everyone else has been auditioning 16, 17, 18 years old. You're going to make a, a, you know, a, a, a detour to college for four more years while they're getting four years more pro experience working with coaches and choreographers. You're going to be wasting more of your parents' money. See, these articles are written about extracting money. So, and it continues. Um, next thing, assessing your progress. Often, summer intensive auditions are the only way that, are the only way that students from smaller or regional schools can get a realistic assessment of where they stand. Or they could just go online and look for free. And if they're getting the training they need, they're not getting the training they need. Um, if at an audition a student sees others their own age doing steps and combinations they haven't learned or aren't secure in, that's a sign that their training is lacking. Well, it totally depends on how those students are doing those combinations, it's not just that they're doing it. But so now we've gotten sold on a college pro. What was it? A, a conservatory. Yeah, college conservatory program, summer, summer intensive. Now it's gonna—I bet you it—it's gonna. We're gonna get to everything here. While acceptance into a major school is a positive indicator, it's a positive indicator that your parents can pay a lot of money. Uh, she knows that technique is not the only way to measure a dancer's development. Yes, it is. Yes, it is the way. That's where you start. There is no art or what she can. Let's see what she's gonna say. Uh, Technique is not the only way to measure a dancer's development. Yes, it is. And specifically, the fundamentals of their technique is, in fact, the way that you do it. Because if the fundamentals are shit, nothing else is going to be good. So you absolutely can use that. Students shouldn't assess their abilities by comparing themselves to the prodigies they see online. Prodigy is not a good word. doesn't mean anything. They mean flexible and whatever, and that's not bad. <coughs> anyway, uh, social media and competitions tend to focus on tricks. Yes, that's why I think... Youth competitions are a disaster and a waste of money, and students are often swayed by that. Well, yeah, because articles like this. Huh? But there's so much more to dance. Yes, there is. <coughs> artistry, musicality, movement quality. Okay, you, you, you cannot get artistry, musicality, or movement quality without mastering turnout first and placement. All that stuff comes as a result of turnout, and you don't get it any other way in ballet. And dancers need to believe what they can be. Yeah, believing doesn't mean shit. <clears throat> they have to be educated. That's the end of that. Okay. Um, despite the tendency to highlight technique over long-term artistic potential, okay, you don't get long-term artistic anything without a phenomenal technique. It, it, it doesn't. It's not or. It's you must have this to get that. Uh, competitions and festivals can help dancers gauge their progress. Wait a minute. I thought she just said... Uh, so competitions tend to focus on tricks and students are often swayed by that. That's bad. And then down here she says that competitions and festivals can help dancers gauge their progress. So make up your mind. Um, yeah, so again, you can spend, parents, ready? You can spend your money on competitions and festivals. Uh, so you can get feedback from a bunch of judges and teachers who also don't know what they're talking about. Uh, let's see, performed at Regional Dance America. That's a, that's a, that's a, um, it's not a ballet festival. That's a modern dance festival. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, but now she, she says again that competitions are best used for the learning experience and exposure. Ex exposure to what? Um, let's see. Especially if you don't perform a lot at your school, it's a great way to get some extra work. But, parents, you have to be coached and put in extra training sessions. That means private lessons. It's also eye-opening, yeah, I bet, for the parents, how much money all this costs. Even if you do well or win an award, to compare yourself to other dancers who may be better than you. Wait a minute, I thought up here it said, students shouldn't assess their abilities by comparing themselves to the prodigies they see. Right here, 
It is also eye-opening if you do well to compare yourself to other dancers who may be better than you. Make up your mind. Do compare or don't compare. Uh, how to catch up. Okay. If signs indicate that you're behind others your age, consider wrapping up your training regimen. Right. Wrap up the spending. If you're not going full-time to a professionally affiliated school, ah, a school has to be affiliated with a company. That's what they mean, affiliated. Not, they're not saying professional quality education. They're saying affiliated, nice little added in there. Adding intensity is imperative. Any and all extra training can help, says dummy. Ideally, visit nearby cities for open classes and workshops with great teachers, whatever a great teacher is. Take advantage of any classes offered by a visiting master teacher. Master, too. And it's not free, and you get to travel, so that's good. Uh, now, here's something else. Websites like Ballet and Form, <coughs> where you can get all kinds of lousy advice, and Progressing Ballet Technique, which has nothing to do with ballet or technique, um, offer training tips from a variety of renowned instructors. Yeah, renowned for what? If you decide to change schools altogether, shop around carefully. Uh, how? They all say the same thing. <laughs> Research where the dancers you admire have trained, like you know anything. You, you admire somebody, but you have no idea, you know, why are you going to... Well, people admire Koreshnikov, I don't see people running to Riga. Right, they don't even know where it is on a map. Let's see. Um, if to be honest, he started in there. Yeah. So why run to Vagano, why not run to... Riga, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so at the end, there's no reason to panic if you're behind peers, but avoid getting complacent. So, no reason to panic, but, but panic and spend more money. Regularly redefine your goals. Why would you do that? Don't you just have a goal? Why would you regularly redefine it? And assess whether you're doing everything you can to move steadily towards them. Okay. Now, this person made up for lost time by enrolling in an intensive dance program at a university. But she regrets not spending more of her parents' money uh, at, some, at more summer programs during high school. Oh, boy. No, I, I added that part. No, no, it says she regrets not going to more summer programs during high but, but that's what it means, yeah. Uh, I was passionate, but didn't know what was required because the people around me didn't give me any facts or information in my life. No, that's not, we weren't trying to do something. Yeah, so, I mean, 15 years of, of training, and she just was, her, oh, whatever it costs, yeah. Uh, so 15 years of training, and these are her words, she was oblivious. That's a, that's a harsh word, actually, to use about yourself. Like, if you told the cat to drive, she would be oblivious as to what you're asking it to do. Wait, but the, so the whole point, like she realized that she spent 15 years, she spent that much money, <coughs> mm -hmm. and now she can work in the direction that she wants to be working in, and the, and the solution is pay more money? Pretty much. No, she finally apparently got, she finally got something, and, you know, some sort of regional theater. Uh, it doesn't say much about what she, is she a core or a ballet or a soloist? I'm sure if she was, I'm sure if she had achieved something worth mentioning, they would have mentioned it, but, you know. She did get something going, but again, there's pictures, and you know, well, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I find that they write articles, and it's about extracting money from parents. It, it's really, they write articles in support of their advertisers, which is understandable to a point. That's their business model, it seems like. And if, and if the advertisers were providing a real, you know, reasonable or honest service, I would be like, okay, write about it. But there's not a critical word in here other than against the student herself. She's oblivious and confused about everything. Why doesn't it say, 
Well, clearly your teacher didn't teach her a damn thing yeah, because yeah, 15 they, years they later. They have the goals on their website about Point Magazine or, or any goals? of those. They have the goals. That their goals, it said that they want to help the dance communities, the teachers and the students to improve themselves. It says there somewhere right. to well, search the website long enough. Look. So, the, but, but the writing, the articles like that, look, it doesn't... It's Point Magazine and it's about... Ballet training. Ballet training. training. It says yeah. right there. And ballet training now. And in this whole article... It doesn't, the word turnout does not appear once. Not once. Because that, is, again, I keep saying this, I don't know, people are going to get tired, but until I start seeing articles that say, yeah, this is turnout, this is what it is, this is how you learn it, this is why you learn it, this is what the process is like, that's what our DVD does. Mm -hmm. If you're not starting with turnout, if you're not uh, talking about turnout, you are not talking about ballet. Period, full stop, that's it. If there's any question about injury or quality of movement or artistry, turn out. Then we can talk about the rest. Because you don't get anywhere else without it. There is no ballet without turnout. And I, I notice m much or most of their articles just, eh, they don't mention it. They're just like, eh, just get around this. Because they don't want to be called out because everyone in the world now thinks that turnout's a bad thing because everyone in the world doesn't understand what turnout is. It's, like, it's not bad, clearly. And quality of movement, which is what gives you, you know, your artistry, comes directly as a result of training turnout. There isn't any other way to get it. I don't know if actually Vasilev said that in one of his interviews. Uh, it's on the, I don't know, people, if they're interested, they want to watch it. It's called uh, Katya and I. Um, and that's their documentary about them. It's, it's only in French. And then... Uh, there is no Russian subtitles or English or anything. Uh -huh. But if you not on YouTube anywhere. No, Probably. no, no. But no. the reason I know that he said that because they they dubbed the language, so then you, you can, can hear still the Russian. hear what he's saying. And he was exactly referring to that. He said it's like you don't. He they asked him, what do you, how do you describe the artistry? Uh -huh. And he said it's like you cannot describe the artis artistry in specifically about ballet if you don't have the technique. So it's like when you have a g great technique and then. He, he was referring to when you have a great technique, a body that can do it, perfect, right. then you have, the, and you have a personality who can transform and right. use that technique in different characters, that will come out the artist. Right. So without that, it's... But why is that not totally and completely and fantastically obvious? Uh, it's like... <laughs> If you're trying to sing opera and you have a shit voice and an untrained voice, no one's going to pay to listen to that. If you have an orchestra trying to play the Ninth Symphony, half of them are drunk and, and with no skill, the other half have broken instruments, you're not paying to see that. Mm. Therefore, and thus, people are not paying to see ballet. Because the bodies are either broken, the dancers are uneducated, the choreographers might be less educated, and the teachers don't know what they're doing. So they don't have coaches. That are, you see what I'm saying? The whole thing is, is like a drunken, you know, I, I don't know. He's actually... Bust to nowhere. Right. Vasilev also, actually, I like that phrase that he's explaining. He said that those people who think that art is easy, he called them dilettantes. Dilettante. That's how he... Yeah, I call them morons, but same basic <laughs> thing, yeah. Well, because he said it like that he and his wife, when they... We, we, we did the, the subtitle of that documentary where they're talking about how horrible and exhausting and crucified, they'd rather be crucified than do that, but they still... No, he said going to class every day is like, is like being crucified every day, you know. Right, we can do, put that up again just right, to... Right, so they're talking about how hard it is, and we're talking about great legends, yeah. right, that the whole world agreed about it, <coughs> right. and that, they talking about it, it's not a, yeah, simple. The class is unpleasant, yeah. on a good day, yeah. on a very good day. And they actually, yeah. they mention it, it's interesting, in the same, I can put it up again so people will see where mm. he's talking about, so especially, you know, when you go into the 30s, and we consider that he already been there. Age 30s. Yeah, yeah, from young age. Yeah. And the, now I'm age 30 and it feels more, I'm losing turnout. So he right. constantly works on it. Yeah. He mentioned that they're yeah. working on it constantly. And here in this article, it seems like, well, the girl never, uh, well, not the girl, in the article says never turnout. Uh, well, they just don't mention it. Yeah, so somehow it's like kind of a, 
I don't know. It looks to me it's a forbidden word, I guess. Well, r right, because they're worried probably about liability. Because all these dancers and students and professionals are being injured catastrophically. You know, hips, like the ones that write us. Mm -hmm. And so the doctors go, well, because of turnout. Well, yeah, because it's not taught correctly. Of course it's going to devastate your body. Look, name any other thing, any other sport, I don't know. If you don't learn how to swim right, you drowned. <laughs> right. You know, if you don't learn how to play golf right, you hit yourself in the head with a club or something. I mean, anything that requires some skill. Well, ice skaters are the worst. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 something like that. I, I'm just saying, I, mean, I like the swimming one. Like, you, know, you, you know, they say, do this, you just won't right down and drown, you know. So if you're not, if you don't have competent teachers, of course you're going to get hurt, especially with something like turnout. It's complicated. There's things to know. There's an order of opera. I mean, all these things that are in our DVD. I mean, well, that's why we did that DVD. Six hours, breaks it down. So these teachers, by the way, are running out of excuses that they don't know this stuff, you know. The information exists now. Go get it. Educate yourself. Let's, let's stop with these articles. This is getting, this is getting like, it's, it's comically stupid. It, it, and the only reason it's not funny is because the, you well, know. Yeah, it's the <clears throat> other thing that, as you said, you know, like it looked like the girl, by the article, if you judge at the end, it was her fault that she did not do the good I know summer programs, that yeah. She, that she did not research enough to go to a good teacher. Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. So, yeah. And again, uh, as I would assume that the injuries and all of that will also come from of course. on her. Where we did the podcast actually about uh, the Vaganova's uh, scientific approach, where I mentioned that, where the one of the lead surgeon who was working on that said mm -hmm. that is if you got injured at school, it's something wrong with your teaching. Yeah. The Why is that not obvious? I don't know. I mean, like I said, you know, you take your kid to school, six years later, they don't know how to add and subtract, and they're illiterate. No parent's going to tolerate that. Yeah. No parent's going to tolerate that. Like, what? But, you know, 15 years later, your kid's, like, essentially illiterate in the subject that they've been taught, right? It's amazing that there's not, like, riots with parents with signs and stuff going, hey, what do we drop 100 grand on? And then the advice, I love the advice, so spend more money. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll solve everything. Throw more money, good money after bad. I love it. Yeah, I mean, every, every other article you know, pushes this same narrative. Yeah, oh, more summer programs, more master classes. Try university, waste more of your time and money, you know. Instead of just, you need the fundamentals. That's it. Everything comes from the fundamentals. You get those right, you get everything else. We're demonstrating it. Yeah.